Potential, potential, potential. That's the best way to describe Alistair Black. A guy who should have been given the world in WWE instead was left sitting on the shelf for six months. Until he finally returned to the WWE and then he was let go. Today we're going to look at the story of Alistair Black and what happened to his WWE run. When Alistair Black showed up in the first NXT UK tournament, he was under his independent name Tommy N. He wouldn't be a part of the tournament, but he would have a standout match against WWE superstar Neville. This was a great showcase for him as most people in the crowd were solidly behind him because they've already seen his work on the independents. Promos would then begin to air for new superstar coming to NXT knowing as Aleister Black. This would be Tommy N's new WWE name. These promos would say that no man is ever truly good, no man is ever truly evil. They had a dark gothic look to them. He went on to say that NXT will fade to black. His first match would be at NXT TakeOver Orlando against Andrade Cien Almas. Again, this was a great showcase match for him as Andrade was very solid with his in-ring work and made Aleister Black look like a million bucks in his debut match. Aleister Black would go on to win the match with a spin kick he now called the Black Mass. Aleister Black had his official arrival in the WWE. From his entrance, to his look, to his in-ring action, you could see the makings of a mega superstar. Even from the debut, people had been fantasizing that one day, maybe, just maybe, we could see Aleister Black versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. This match would never happen, sadly. Aleister Black would enter a program with Hideo Itami that would lead to a match at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. This was another great showcase for Aleister Black, and he would pick up the win again with the Black Mask Kick. In NXT, Aleister Black was getting work matches with ton of very solid workers, some of the best workers in the world. His first three matches in WWE were against Neville, now known as Pac, Andrade Cien Almas, and Hideo Itami, you might know him as Kenta. This was a great way to make someone look fantastic. These three, Match quality wise are some of the best in the entire sports entertainment world that we would like to call professional wrestling. Aleister Black tore the house down and they all made him look really good. Aleister Black would then enter a feud with Velveteen Dream. Dream would demand that Aleister Black say his name, which he did not do. They would have a great match at NXT TakeOver War Games where Aleister Black would pick up the victory again with the Black Mask Kick. Following the match, Aleister Black would say the Dream's name. This match would put Aleister Black on Vince McMahon's radar. It's reported that Vince McMahon became a fan of Aleister Black at this time, but Triple H said that he had plans for Aleister Black, so he was not called up to the main roster. Vince would later find more interest in Aleister Black when he feuded with Johnny Gargano, but again Triple H would tell Vince to wait. He had to finish up his plans with Aleister Black. Aleister Black would indeed feud with Johnny Gargano in NXT and have a takeover match, but his big break came when he won the NXT Championship at NXT TakeOver New Orleans against Andrade Cien Almas. When Black first went against Andrade, Andrade had not yet found it. It took him a while to find that perfect character within himself. His second go around at TakeOver New Orleans, that was different. Andrade was a superstar now, and Aleister Black was about to be the face of the NXT brand. The match featured Zelina Vega constantly getting involved in the match, distracting Aleister Black. Towards the very end of the match, she would go to the top rope to deliver a crossbody, but Black ducked it and Andrade caught her. Black would then deliver the Black Mask Kick and become new NXT Champion. What a great ending to the match. Black would end up losing the NXT Championship to Tommaso Ciampa on an episode of NXT TV after Johnny Gargano would interfere. He would get a rematch in a triple threat match, but Ciampa would retain the title. He would have his final NXT Championship title match at NXT TakeOver Phoenix against Ciampa in a one-on-one -on -one match for the NXT Championship. The next night, he would debut in the WWE Royal Rumble 2019 during the Royal Rumble match. There was a few other NXT superstars in this Royal Rumble match. He would end up getting one elimination. 
Following this, he would form a partnership with Ricochet, which would eventually lead them to into a team and go on to the main roster teaming together. On February 18, 2019, on Monday Night Raw, Aleister Black made his official main roster debut, defeating Elias. Aleister Black and Ricochet would compete for the Raw Tag Team titles at Fastlane and the SmackDown Tag Titles at WrestleMania 35, but they were unsuccessful in both matches. During the Superstar Shakeup, Aleister Black would be officially drafted to Raw in April, but then he would be moved to SmackDown shortly after, as his real-life wife Selena Vega was a SmackDown superstar and they wanted to be on the same show. Following the move, Aleister Black would appear in promos in a dark room, saying that he was waiting for a challenger. He would be waiting for someone to fight. Eventually, Cesaro answered the challenge and they had a match at Extreme Rules in July. Aleister Black would pick up the victory. At the 2019 draft in October, Aleister Black would be drafted to Monday Night Raw. This is kind of where things went downhill. I know he had some awesome matches with Buddy Murphy, he even teamed up with Rey Mysterio and had a pay-per-view match with AJ Styles. It always seemed like he was a part of somebody else's feud though. His match with AJ Styles led to The Undertaker coming out and choke slamming AJ Styles. Styles would then go on to have a WrestleMania match with The Undertaker, while Aleister Black would versus Bobby Lashley in a match that honestly didn't really mean anything. Aleister Black would compete in a 2020 Money in the Bank match, which was kind of cool. However, he was thrown off the roof of a building, WWE headquarters, by Baron Corbin. Along with Rey Mysterio, they would both be thrown off the building. That's right, they were thrown off a building. They were thrown off WWE headquarters. They shouldn't be alive right now, but in typical WWE fashion, they never talked about it again. Black would then enter a long-term program with Kevin Owens that would lead to some decent matches, but it didn't really amount to anything. Eventually, Aleister Black was drafted to SmackDown in October of 2020 during the Superstar Shakeup. Black would then not be featured on TV for six months. He literally did nothing. At this time, his wife was having issues with the WWE. WWE was trying to control its superstars from streaming on Twitch.tv. Zelina disagreed with this as she was making good money off Twitch. She ultimately got released from the WWE. And a lot of people see this as the reason why Aleister Black wasn't being used. Black says that Vince McMahon took him off TV to get him away from Kevin Owens and was going to bring him back in a big way. In May of 2021, Aleister Black promos then begin airing showing him reading a book called The Tales of the Dark Father. The promos were very similar to his early NXT promos. Looks as if he was going to be debuting a brand new character. After several weeks of promos, Black returned on May 21st to SmackDown. He attacked Big E with a Black Mask Kick. Awesome! We finally get to have a program with Aleister Black. He got a new character, he's got a new look, he's going to do some great things, and he's gone. Aleister Black was released from his WWE contract when WWE cleaned house on June 2nd, 2021. Aleister Black said on one of his Twitch streams post WWE that he and WWE are on good terms and Vince McMahon said that they may have a spot for him down the road. Aleister Black was an amazing WWE superstar with unlimited potential. WWE literally had him sit on the shelf for six months with nothing to do. When he came back, he did a few promos, looking to be a new character, but was let go from the company. This is a big slap in the face, and it really boils my blood just thinking about it. A ton of WWE superstars, they, they say that you can be pissed off at Vince McMahon and fuming, but once you leave his office, you'll be his best friend. If I've ever heard a case of this, this is one of them. I'm sure that Aleister Black appreciates the opportunities that he was given in the WWE, but he shouldn't be scared to get work elsewhere in professional wrestling. He is a guy who can go out there and have an awesome match with just about anyone. His time in NXT was a great showcase of talent that he has, and he just wasn't utilized properly when he got to the main roster. 
Black says that Vince McMahon apologized to him, that he wasn't used better, and that they dropped the ball with him a number of times. But if that's the case, why didn't they keep him around and fix the issues? They were obviously working on a new character and wanted to do big things with him. To me, it looks like another case of a superstar getting let go because WWE was trying to save a penny or two. Maybe someday Aleister Black will end up in the WWE again, but I'd rather see him take his talents elsewhere and become a star on his own like I know that he can. I know this sounds cliche, but I'd love to see Aleister Black become All Elite.